chapter sites are something that maybe a few of us are very familiar with. Maybe they're something that we've heard very little bit little about or know nothing about. Uh, maybe we've uh, heard of them from somebody else, but we're not entirely sure we have access to it. We're not entirely sure how to get access to it. Um, we're going to answer all those questions. Uh, and by the end of this tackle, how we can use these chapter sites to recruit new members, engage with our audiences, maybe that's potential new members, and actually fundraise a little bit. So like I said, wherever, wherever you guys are at in the process, feel free to drop questions throughout. Um, any questions that you guys might have into the chat, I'll do my best to, to get to those either throughout um, or closer to the end. So what we're gonna be talking about, I wanna be respectful of everyone's time, uh, get you guys moving quickly, uh, get you equipped. But what we're really gonna be doing when we're talking about chapter sites is adding another tool in your VPCOM tool belt. So you've got all sorts of things like email, social media. This is just another tool that you all can use to do what you do, um, which is run all communications for your chapter. I, I am maybe a little bit biased, but um, I think your, your role is the most important uh, in, uh, and I see some head nods uh, around the table because nothing happens without you guys and being able to communicate everyone else's ideas. So we'll, we'll do some quick introductions, let you know who I am, who this guy rambling at you is. Uh, we'll talk about why does this even matter? How do I use my site? What are the, what are the basics? Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about storytelling as well, um, how, to, how to really take your storytelling game to the, to the next level um, and do some good with it. Briefly, who am I? Um, I think it's important just to know a little bit about me. I, I might've met some of you. My name is Joe Curley. I work for SIGUP headquarters as the digital media manager. Um, you should be seeing a, a guy with a little more clean shaven and well-suited haircut for professional lifestyle. Um, I grew up in, um, in Washington state, way up in the corner there in the Pacific Northwest small little town and went to Washington State University, stumbled into SIGEP, uh, thankfully, not by design, but glad it happened that way. Um, believe it or not, I used to be a wild undergrad uh, like you. I was not always this clean shaven. I'm, I'm working my way back there, uh, but held some, held some roles, VPCOM being one of them. Uh, worked for in sports marketing for a little while. That was my, that was my shtick. That was my this is my gig, um, photo, video, digital marketing for the Sounders and some small soccer teams there. Got convinced to come out to Richmond, Virginia headquarters, and someone thought it would be a good idea to throw me across the United States uh, and into the Deep South to be a regional director. That was my start with, with SIGEP headquarters. Got a big brother, loving family. I love to ski. Um, we can geek out about that some other time if you ever want to. But that's, that's me and SIGEP. Right now I'm in charge of all, all digital communications. So most, most emails that you get or social media that you see, the podcast, any graphic design, um, I, I have a part in that and can, can answer any questions that you guys have um, around what we're doing at a larger scale or if you ever wanna talk shop on any of that stuff, you guys will have my, um, my contact info. But Chapter sites. So why, why do we even have chapter sites? Um, where, where did they come from? Originally, our presence on the web as SIGEP says SIGEP chapters was all over the place, practically indistinguishable. And for people who spend on average about six hours a day online, probably more than that, we spend about two and a half hours a day on social media. And we check our phones about 52 times per day on average, um, we need to make sure that, and when I say we, you guys, uh, SIGEP in, in general, need to make sure that uh, 
we are represented well online. One of the ways we do that is with chapter sites. So before um, the brand was, was practically indistinguishable. You couldn't tell uh, Washington State SIGEP from Florida SIGEP from, um, you know, Elon SIGEP. It just looked different from every campus. So what a chapter site does is bring that all together and make it easier for you um, as a VP of communications to, to do what you do and communicate with, with the people you need to communicate without having to be some web design expert or needing to be um, a communications guru. So chapter sites at their very basic level, it's a unique website for your chapter. Um, many of you have maybe heard of Square, Squarespace or Wix. Um, ours operate on the WordPress platform, not necessarily a, an important or distinguishing uh, fact that you need to know, but it is a template for you to plug and play with um, for, for your chapter. So that's pre-populated with a couple of things as we'll see later. Later, I'll do a little walkthrough of the site. Things like the about SIGEP section, that is pre-populated. So, you know, the history of SIGEP is not gonna change anytime soon. So why, why should you have to bother with going back and um, rewriting the history? Stuff like that is set in stone there on your chapter site. Whereas other sections like the about my chapter section or the recruitment section, that's where you as a vice president of communications own your chapter site and can really tell your story, um, tell the story that you wanna to tell to parents, alumni, university partners, and potential new members. Um, at the end of the day, it's just an easier way for you to tell stories. It's an easier way for you to get people to take action, the action that you wanna take, want them to take, whether that's a potential new member joining your chapter or whether it's um, the university sponsoring an event you're holding or a parent letting their son join a fraternity. This is your way to, to convince people and get them, get them to take action. So I've kind of, I've kind of touched on it, but what's in it for, what's in it for you guys? What, like, what's in it for me? One, you don't have to worry about all the SIG up branding. You don't have to worry about, does this look good? Am I using the right colors? That's all taken care of. Um, it's an easier way to engage. And we're gonna to touch on this, but it gives you the power to be a better recruiter than your vice president of recruitment and his committee. Um, and I see some head nods again. Uh, you, it might be surprising, but you guys have more power to recruit and to raise money than anyone else on the executive board. Um, you have more power to recruit than your vice president of recruitment through the use of this technology. I want you to remember that you can, you can do his job maybe better than he can. Um, and it doesn't hurt that it's free to you guys. <laughs> like you don't have to waste money, which on average winds up being like a, a grand a year um, to, to maintain a site that, that we're not taking care of for you. So I'm going to go probably against what's usually recommended on, on Zoom meetings, but I'm going to ask you to open up some other tabs if you can, um, if you're able on your, on your laptop. And so, like I said, maybe some people have viewed their chapter site before. Maybe some people have had access and they've been cruising, they've been using it. Maybe some people didn't know they had one, didn't know what it is. That's okay, wherever you're at. You should have... Uh, in the last three or four days received an email from, um, from chapter.sites at sigep.net. And what that email was, I, I'd suggest you, you check your spam, maybe if you didn't catch it, but what that email was, was an activation for those of you who don't already have access as an admin user for your chapter site. That email is gonna, is gonna prompt you to gain access, which it's a pretty simple, simple process, but it's going to help set you up so that you can do some of the things that we're talking about this evening and, and take some of the steps. The other thing I want you to pull up, if you're able, is sigep.org uh, slash help. Type that into a, into a browser, and what you should find is a couple of 
um, opportunities for resources. So whether it's my SIG app, your BNP app, and I want you to define these chapter sites, um, training modules. So as we walk through the site, you'll see that there is a step-by-step, -step, there are step-by-step -step instructions for each part of your site. So if you're going, going through and you're wondering, how do I update this page? Can I update this page? Go to sigup.org slash help and find these training modules. These are kind of your, um, your, your go-to resource. Whenever you have a question, go here first. And then if it's not answered here, um, you, can, you can reach out to headquarters. We're, we're always happy to, happy to help you. You guys, if, um, if you cannot find that email, if you don't think you got that email, aren't able to get user access, that's okay. Don't worry about it this evening. Um, it's, it's not going to hold you back with what we're talking about, but go ahead and shoot an email to chapter.sites at sigep.net. You should see it on the screen there um, whenever you're able. And uh, we'll get back to you setting you up with access. Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cruise through this because this is we're gonna walk through this uh, in a more more in depth way. But we're gonna talk how how can these sites help you recruit new members? How can they help you engage with the people you need to engage with? And how can they actually help you raise some some cold hard cash? I think that would be some serious clout if you are the guy on your exec board. Um, bringing in the actual dollars, you know, working with alumni, working with donors. We're going to talk about how to, how to get that done. So first, how can my chapter site, how can my blog help me recruit? Um, imagine you write a blog post. You maybe ask another member in your chapter to write a blog post. The key here is something you guys should write down if, if you are taking notes is you don't have to be the only one, nor should you be the only one creating content and writing content for your chapter and for your chapter site blog. I think what's most important is getting the people who are best suited to do that in your chapter. Say you've got a journalism major who's just nuts about telling stories get that guy to be your storyteller. So for those who, who haven't um, taken a look at their sites before, you should be seeing um, Northern Iowa's site right now, their, their homepage. So as you can see, I'll, I'll walk through the sections right now. First being these homepage sliders, which is something that you all have the ability to, to update to whatever you'd like, any picture and any link here. Again, I'm not gonna go through the, the nitty gritty of how to update that right now. I'll show you what the back end of it looks like, but those training modules will, will instruct you how to make those updates. You've got pages like about our chapter. Again, up for you to dictate what this content looks like. This is your blank slate to, to use the color you wanna use use the photos, tell the story, um, tell the story of your chapter, have fun, get a little creative here. Uh, you guys can always look at other sites too, other, um, other chapter sites, steal their ideas, straight, straight plagiarize because we're all in a, <laughs> all in a team here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you guys have a, have a group me or a group chat going. If, if you know you, you have a, a stellar chapter site, and you guys know who you are because you, you put the time in or the past past guy put the time in, drop the link to your chapter site in that, in that group may have the, have the confidence to do that, confidence to do that and let, let people tear it up. Um, chapter officers page. This one's looking a little, little wonky, which is okay. I'm not trying to out anybody right now, but uh, this isn't exactly what it's supposed to look like. We'll see if we can't find a site that's got A 
little better. So this is um, what I would implore you to, to update first if you haven't taken, taken a look at your site in a long time. This is probably out of date from, from the last guys. Um, this one doesn't look like it is. But this is Washington State. Um, and this allows you to, to tell your story again, let guys reach out to you by email, phone. You can decide what this looks like. There's a couple of different variations and you can decide if you want to put contact info, but this allows maybe parents and alumni to reach out, you, reach out to you in a more efficient way. Uh, it lets potential new members know who's in charge. Down here, some of those um, tabs that I mentioned that are, they're, they're not changing anytime soon. You know, the balance man program uh, isn't, isn't going to go under a, a huge makeover anytime soon. And we're not going to force you guys to, to rewrite the copy on that. Um, you know, our learning communities, Conclave, Ruck, those are kind of set in stone. So we wrote the content here and you guys don't have to worry about it. Balance man scholarship. Um, this is where we talk about you guys running the show as far as recruitment goes. Um, this is a place where you can direct people, where you can link on social media during recruitment, um, where you can direct traffic, where you can, again, sort of tell your story. This is up to you guys to update. You can see the difference there between these two sites. You're able to link your own Balance Man Scholarship, which for most chapters right now is a simple Google form. Um, but we will see that on other forms, example, the membership interest form. Oh, we'll go here. The membership interest form and the refer a brother for a new member form. These forms go straight to my SIGEP, your my SIGEP portal, um, or they go straight to volunteers. There's a volunteer form in, in there as well that goes straight to your district governor or your ABC president. What, what's coming new for you guys is soon you'll be able to opt in to having your balance man scholarship also be an automatic form that goes straight to my SIGEP. So you don't have to worry about the next guy losing the, the BMS application or three years from now, they lose the BMS application. Okay. Sorry guys, I uh, <laughs> a few guys tried to let me know there is a couple of guys stuck in the waiting room. My apologies. Um, I was looking at too many screens here. Um, rest assured that anything that we've covered, one can be uh, retaught by the guys who are already on that. I know you guys communicate with your with your group me, or will be covered in follow up, or there'll be there'll be resources um, online you can use quick to catch you guys up real quick um, who, are, who are just joining us. Do me a favor and, and pull up a couple of different tabs if you can. Um, one, pull up sigup.org slash help um, and you'll find some training modules there for your chapter site. And two, go ahead and check your email for an email from chapter.sites at sigup.net with some information to uh, get you set up on your chapter site. That's if you aren't already an admin user. And feel free to, to drop any questions down into the chat box as we, as we go along. Um, I'll answer those as, as, as I can or, or get to them all at the end. And I'm seeing a, a good suggestion there on um, 
our chapter officers page from Parker. It says he uses Photoshop to make sure the, the photo sizes are all the same size, which uh, is great advice to make it make it look clean like this for your for your chapter officers page. If you don't have Photoshop, you know, simply resizing photos on your on your laptop or, or cropping them um, to your best ability works as well. Other things on, on the chapter set you can be aware of. Um, I had mentioned the Our Brother form. This is another great form that you guys can blast out on social media regularly. Um, simple way for alumni, parents, friends of yours on, on campus, sorority members, if they know new members or current, um, current students at the university who would make great SIG apps, make great guys for your chapter. This is a great way. Um, to get new leads for recruitment. Some other things as we look about the chapter site is the support our chapter uh, section. So this is when I talk about you guys are, can be the real um, money makers of your executive board. You guys can make actual tangible impact through, through a dollar sign. This is one way to do that. Um, these are, are set to make it easier for your chapter to attend the events like Conclave, Ruck, and Carlson. But these are not the only ways that you can fundraise with your chapter. Um, these are the ones that are located on your home page. You can also make other pages to support local chapter scholarships like Washington State's done here. They've got a few local scholarships. This is again, um, something that we'll talk about. You can use your storytelling to get people to, to donate. Scrolling down, this is still on the homepage of your site. But you'll see you've got a chapter calendar here, which again can easily be linked to any Google calendar that you have, whether it's your, your VPCom calendar, or maybe you've got a chapter-wide calendar that you follow. Again, how to do that can easily be found at sigep.org slash help. Simple tutorial to follow that. Um, there's also a section here for you to link your social media accounts, which is sort of a um, set it and forget it. Uh, there's, we've made a few updates. If, if there's any past VP comms, there is a hassle of having to constantly update that section. But once you, once you link your accounts there, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, those will automatically update anything you anything you post. So it's sort of a, a nice cross between the two platforms, makes it super easy for you. And your your bread and butter, the meat and potatoes, whatever you will, of your of your site and of your role, how you use this tool is your blogs, your blog post. These are how you motivate people to take the action that you want to take. These are how you get a new member, convince a new member why he should join SIGEP. Um, like I talked about, we'll, we'll look at a, a couple of examples um, of blog posts. But first, I'm going to hop into the back end of the site. So what you're seeing now on, on the screen that I'm showing you is the public facing view of your chapter site. That email that you got from chapter.sites at sigep.net will help you gain access to the back end. And if you didn't receive that email, you can always email chapter.sites at sigep.net. Make sure you guys have that email to gain access. But to log in for every site, all you're going to do to your URL uh, is add WP admin to the end of the URL. Sort of a, a easy shortcut to get into the login screen, but you can save that link. Also, that email will take you directly to it. You're going to use your credentials, the ones that you're, you already have set up or the ones that, um, that you're going to set up with that email and by emailing chapter.sites. So, at first glance, for those of us who haven't been back here, haven't seen the, the back end of WordPress, uh, this, this scared the, the shit out of me when I first saw it. I don't know about you guys, but it can be, um, 
it can be a little daunting to see all these different tabs. And if you not don't have any other experience with web development, um, I promise you it is, it is not as scary as it might look. And some of you might be saying, this is easy. I do this for class or for work, or I've done this all the time, but I know we have, have people at different levels here. Um, through those training modules, which again, are all linked right here, how to log in and change a password, how to edit those officer bios that we talked about, how to make a post on your blog. All those are gonna take you step-by-step step exactly through what you need to do on this side. Um, you won't need to memorize what these are. You won't need to understand what they, what they necessarily do because those training modules are gonna walk you through. Um, and I hope you guys are, have gained, gained access to those and are, and are looking through already. Again, is, if there's any questions, again, step-by-step, step, relatively easy for you guys to follow. If there's any questions you guys have, please do, do toss them into the, uh, into the chat. Okay, let me catch up a little bit here. So our blog, back to how is our blog gonna help us recruit? How can one blog post get a new member? Uh, it seems like a bit of a far-fetched concept, but imagine you or someone you've asked, your uh, communications committee writes a blog post directed towards potential new members. You're trying to portray the value of joining SIGEP. One example might be how SIGEP improved my GPA, how the accountability and academic success plan of SIGEP changed my GPA. It might be a, a piece written, written by um, a member who is passionate about academics and he came a long way. He's got a personal story. So you write that blog post um, and, and share it on, on your site. No one, no one is going to visit your site willingly. And I, I mean that in the, in the best way is as much as you spruce it up and make it look great, um, people just don't visit websites. They find their way to websites through social media, through links. So you're gonna take that link of your blog posts and you're gonna post it to social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We'll talk a little bit about LinkedIn bios and how to make that easier for people to, to find your site as well. Um, it, it gains traction, you know, it's out there in the world. If you write it and let it sit on your site, no one's ever gonna find it, um, except for maybe me, I'm, I'm probably gonna find it. Um, but that PNM finds the blog post, he reads the blog post, he's motivated to submit that BMS application form. He says, I wanna learn more. He submits his interests or he submits a BMS application that lands him on your potential new member list and you've just set your VPR up to make an easy sell because you know that this guy is interested. He, he wants to learn more. Or you know that this volunteer who just submitted an interest form wants to learn more. He's engaged. So your AVC can then easily reach out to him and turn him into a volunteer. Or you guys can bring him in and have him... Um, have them hold a, hold a webinar or a seminar for your chapter. So we've been on from simply writing a post or asking so-and-so in your chapter, write a post about why you should join SIGEP to recruiting a new member. And you haven't had to put as much work in as your VPR would to find these guys out of thin air. You're gonna make them look like a fool. So what makes a good blog post? Um, Again, you guys don't have to be master writers. You don't have to be, um, you know, writing novels out here. They can be, they can be short, one to two minute reads, quick blurbs. But some of the some of the keys to writing a good blog post, and some of you guys are really good at this already that I've seen. One, a headline, a catchy, especially if you're going to social media eye-catching and descriptive. Um, there's a balance between being eye-catching and completely uh, clickbaity and confusing. And 
actually letting people know what the story is about without sounding like AP news or just typing out your first, the first line of your story. Um, it's okay to get a little creative with these two. You guys are, are kind of running, you're running the show. You're running your own newspaper, if you will. You're running your own media company. That is your chapter, um, which is something you're going to be able to throw on your resumes that is going to blow people away. So a catching headline. Your first couple of sentences, or your first paragraph, your intro needs to needs to get people hooked. It needs to let them know, okay, this is what I'm reading about, and this is why I want to learn more. So the who, what, when, where, and how. Uh, we had, you know, this chapter held this event to discuss X, Y, and Z on this date, uh, and this was the outcome, or this was the result. The body, you can pull quotes from brothers, you can pull quotes from alumni, have some pictures, that's sort of the meat and potatoes of your story. Um, it doesn't have to be super long, but the most important part of your blog post, and again, if you guys are, are taking notes, this is one to write down, is your call to action on your blog post. Your CTA, your call to action is how people take a next step. So if we go back to that example of, I've written a blog post directed at a potential new member, I post it to social media, he finds it, um, or you know, maybe he, yeah, he finds it and he gets to the end and your blog post says, thanks for reading, goodbye. He's done, he, he's gonna exit out of your site. He doesn't know what to do next. He, you can't assume he's going to take the liberty to go find your BMS application. So your call to action should apply to who you think is going to be reading this story. So say, you know, you, you have a potential new member. What do you want him to do next? You want him to submit a BMS application. You want him to submit a membership interest form. You want him to read out, reach out to the VPR. So at the end of your recruitment blog post, you can say something like, interested in learning more about SIGEP? submit this membership interest form or reach out to our VPR, Joe Curley, at his email address. And your call to actions can change depending on who you think or who you want to read this story and who you want to take action. Maybe this is, we'll, we'll talk about the, the fundraising component. Um, what, you, what you shouldn't do when thinking like a fundraiser is think about how can I ask people for money? Um, it's, it's the last thing you should do. You should inform them. You should provide value for them. Um, you should ask their advice. But mainly, if you're, if you're in the business or, or want to get serious about communicating with your alumni and parents and, and seeing if you can get donations for your chapter out of them through your chapter site, just tell them what's going on. Um, coming from a guy who is, is a good amount of years uh, starting to get removed from his chapter, it feels good to just know what's going on. Um, so maybe you're just writing an update on, uh, you know, our VP com attended this training event and gained these skills or our chapter held this uh, service event and this is what we learned from it. And your call to action can either be want to give, want to get engaged with SIGEP as a volunteer, or do you want to ensure for events like this can happen in the future? Maybe that's your, maybe that's your call to getting people to um, donate some change to make sure that these events can happen. So want to ensure that events like this can happen for future SIGEPs in our chapter, donate here. That's maybe a, a better call to action there for for donations. We're gonna take a look at a couple of examples. So this uh, from, from Cleveland State, who has good chapter site, great blog writing. They, or I should say he um, posts his blogs regularly to social media. You can see he's already got them here on the side. Example here is they had a, a pretty successful 
SIGEP alumni, Darren Trubitsky, um, who works with Jordan, Nike, come in and do a session. He wrote up a, a simple blog post saying, this is what the event's about. Uh, this is what he talked about. This is what we learned. And then he posted it to social media. Now imagine uh, incoming freshman or, you know, junior who is trying to get into the branding clothing industry sees that your chapter just had this dude who runs the Jordan brand come in and teach. That's a recruitment tool all of a sudden. So, and it, it doesn't always have to be, you know, the Jordan brand. It can be any event that you're holding. If it's on your calendar, you should write a blog post about it. It can, it can be effective. And I promise you, somebody is going to care. Um, even if that somebody is, is your one alumni or that one potential new member, it could be the difference. We already looked at the Northern Iowa site, but another good example that they had for recruitment, tips for you and I freshmen for a successful first year. Um, they, they pulled some of their seniors and just asked, what, what advice do you got? Now you can imagine as a potential new member, this, this could be like pure gold if you're wondering what the hell do I do? And you've got advice from, from four people who have already done it. They did a very good job um, in their call to action down here, as you guys can see, looking to get more involved at UNI or a community you can call home. SIGET provides that click here. Very important to, to provide the link there. This is a great example of a call to action. This gets posted to social media, it funnels people back to your site. Another example, why SIGEP? Just simply asking any brother. He doesn't have to be a good writer, just any brother. Ask him why the hell did he join SIGEP? Get him to write something. Get him to send you a couple of pictures. That's your blog post. You know, you text him that tonight and say, hey, can you write this? by the end of the week at the latest, maybe he's quicker than that. You text one guy a week, that's your blog right there. You know, that's your recruitment strategy. You're helping your out, helping your VPR out a ton. And again, a great call to action at the end. Membership interest, refer a brother link. I'll go back to uh, Cleveland State's Instagram, which again, you can see that they're, they're posting their blogs to social media. You can see it on their Facebook as well. But if you scroll down, so here's their guest, that guest speaker that we're talking about from Jordan Brand. Catch up on his enthralling talk on our website. So it's a good example, but we'll talk a little bit about how to, how to use your link in bio on Instagram to make it even, even more effective, easier for the person to, to find it. So a good example of here of, of taking your blog posts, posting them to social media. So two tools that I'd recommend for you guys, Facebook and Twitter are easy to, to share your blog posts. You just throw the link in there. People can follow it, clicking on it easily. Instagram, obviously a little harder um, without, without having clickable links. A lot of chapters I've seen, you guys know, you're, you're better at social media than I am. Um, a lot of people use link in bio. Two, two things that I'd recommend if you're not already using them is one, go ahead and just search later.com slash link in bio. It's an easy way for you to get one single link that people can then click on. And once they click on that link, I'll see if I can give you an example here of what the back end looks like. So for example, they'll click on that link and then they can then follow any story that you've got. So that one link then allows you to link to all your different blog posts, all your different pages. Another example of a good tool is Linktree. Same, same principle. Um, it allows you to have one link in your bio, but you can constantly update it with certain, you know, you can have five blog, your five most recent blog posts in there, or you can have your BMS application and your membership referral link so that every time you say link in bio, you don't have to change it. 
Uh, it's always just your link in bio is the same. And I encourage if you guys have tools that are better than these, um, more effective than these, if I'm already outdated, that's okay. Use your, use your group me, uh, share those best practices with each other. Uh, you guys are, are each other's best, um, best resource. So the support and training that you guys have as you, as you have questions, which you're going to, and that's okay. Um, you've got the training modules, sigup.org slash help. Um, you should have received some onboarding emails and you've also got full-time support from a SIGEP staff member um, here, at, here at headquarters. So that's, that's that chapter.sites at sigep.net email that I referred to. That is gonna be where you guys go when you have questions or when you want to get the word out about a story that you're writing. And some of my uh, a parting request maybe I, I should ask is as you guys are writing these stories, as you are changing the conversations, changing the brand around your chapter, you're beating the VPR at his own game, you're raising money, as you guys are sharing that and you're doing it on social media, please tag um, at official SIGEP on whatever you do, specifically Instagram, so we can reshare those. But and a lot of times you'll write a, something great will happen in your chapter. And it's sometimes hard for the word to get to me, to get to headquarters, to get to your alumni. And what I love to do and what our, my team loves to do is take the stories that you guys are writing, um, reshare them at a national level. So maybe your story that was just about to reach 20 people now reaches, you know, 2000 at minimum, probably closer to 20,000, which again, whether you're looking for a career in this or not, to be able to say that things that you've written or content that you've created gets shared to 20,000 people, uh, it's going to be a nice, nice tool to, to have in your interviews in the future. I guarantee it. So for your own good and, and for me, please do tag us, share those stories with us. We want to, we want to hear them. It, it helps, it helps everybody. Um, so, so what's, what's next for you guys? We've, we've talked about why chapter sites are important. Um, and one thing I'll, I'll add to that is it, it might be easy for you to say, um, and I, I trust me, I would say the same thing and I have said the same thing uh, prior, but that maybe, maybe I can do this, I can do this better um, than a chapter site. I can make this look better. I can make it um, more effective. And to that, I'll say you're pro you're, you might be right. You might be correct that you could make it look a little bit better this year, or you could make it a little more effective. But what I would ask you to trust me on is that the next guy maybe can't and the guy after him maybe can't and whatever you create this year if you if you truly want to build a legacy as a vice president of communication um, and you want to pass something down to the next guy this is your way to do it because it'll live on past you your chapter site will will be taken care of by headquarters and the blogs that you create and the content and the stories that you tell will live for you know 15, 20 years down the road, we'll be able to go back and see the stories that you've created. So I, I just caution that uh, I initially had the same thought of, I can do this better. I'm going to create my own site. Um, but I've seen too many times that people have done that. The site's not going to, not going to live and people are going to lose the password to log in. And uh, this is, this is, this is more beneficial for your legacy. So Please, if you do not already have access, um, email chapter.sites at sigup.net to get access. You should have all, those of you who didn't, you should have gotten an email in the last couple of days to activate your account. Use sigup.org slash help. Um, the, the three steps, I'm not, not going to give you homework. That's not my job. You've got plenty of it already. You guys are are busy as all get out. I understand that. But if I had to recommend doing something, um, I would say first thing, if you haven't already done it or it's out of date, maybe the last guy didn't get to it, 
update your chapter officers page. Um, it's a it's a bad look when <laughs> when you're the guy in charge and your face isn't even up there. Um, so take some take some some photos of your guys. It doesn't have to be professional. You can you can snap them on portrait mode. Tell them to um, take a picture of themselves. You know wherever they're at. Send them to you and update those. So one, update that chapter officers page. Two, if you you know, recruit, recruitment's year round. If you haven't haven't already done it, you gotta you gotta update your your recruitment page, your BMS application on there. And again, sigup.org slash help. That's step by step instructions for for how you guys can go about it. Um, and three, uh, get to get to telling get to telling stories. That's uh, that's the fun part I think of of the job outside of updating you know updating the the site you guys get to tell the story you get to create the brands of your chapter you um, to anyone and everyone who's going to listen which is potentially members alumni headquarters parents news media the university university president you create the story it's it's a ton of power you guys have um, excited to see what you all do with it again I haven't seen any new ones, but please do drop any questions you guys have into the, into the chat box and I'll try and run through them. I'd love to be able to give, um, I don't know if these are scheduled for, for an hour long or an hour and a half long, but I would love to be able to give you guys some of your, some of your night back um, or most of your night back. You, you, you definitely are <laughs> deserve it. Um, any questions that you have can also be sent at any time to chapter.sites at siget.net. 